hello, hello. May has been quite a month <laughs> so far over here. Um, oh, Gretchen, thank you for joining the channel. Thank you. I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but hi, everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and welcome to the May 2022 Chemnitz Dialogue live stream. This month, we are going to be dying some urine inspired by time, pretty much. I've been feeling really pressed for time lately. And so, uh, yeah, I, when I found these clocks, I really liked the neutrals. And hi, Indy. Hi. I know, you were, you were just burping. I'm probably going to need to let you out in a minute, but hello. You know I'm streaming. Uh, and I really liked the neutrals in this image. I thought that the kind of coppery orange color and the oxidized copper color were both really fun and yeah I wanted to play with it now I did forget that I used clocks as an inspiration photo but a different kind of clock it was like red and black a few years ago uh, and I think I'll talk about that in the live stream recap but for now Indy let's go outside um, because if you're sitting there pawing at me then you probably want to go outside because And he'll start barking in like three, two, one. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so every month I pick a new inspiration photo and I will dye yarn inspired by this image. <laughs> and I invite all of you to join along and dye yarn inspired by this same image at home. Uh, and then when I, and then I'll have a short video recapping the yarn that I dyed and I'll feature some of the yarn that you dyed inspired by the same photo. So to submit your pictures, <laughs> Indy, hold on, honey. Uh, to submit pictures, just use the hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue on Instagram or reply to the photo of these clocks on the public Chemnitz Facebook page. And yep, <laughs> we got Indy barking in the chat too. <laughs> Um, what? Wait. No, I'm not giving you a cookie. Oh, shoot. But I said it. Fine, I will give you a cookie. You want to do a trick for chat? Here, come here. Indy, wait. Sit. Oh, good. They can see you. Daddy? Daddy. The content you didn't know you needed. <laughs> Hi, good boy. Okay, you, um, why don't we get you out of here though? Come on, let's, you know where to go. Good boy. He's like, mommy is streaming. That means I get pets, right? <laughs> All right, um, but I do have some other announcements. So we'll be dying yarn uh, momentarily. I actually pulled like a ton of stock solutions. We're gonna try to mix our colors because I'm, a lot of these are nearly empty and I wanna use them up. Uh, yeah, but I do have some other announcements and I don't have images for it here, but uh, I still have a couple of the uh, 2022 spring mini skein mini series yarn sets available and I have a link not handy <laughs> I'll drop in the chat uh, I'll drop the whole like section and there's a couple more add-on skeins as well um, and so those are available the series will start on Monday so every night at 8 30 p.m. Eastern time next week there will be a new yarn dyeing video all centered on this year's theme of painting rainbows. And I know a lot of people, well, some people are still waiting to open their yarn until when the video comes out. Other people couldn't wait. And so I'm already seeing on Instagram some um, works in progress and it's so exciting. Uh, and so I really hope that you are loving the yarn. Uh, and so that is the first big announcement. To uh, subscribe, please make sure you're subscribed. Um, but the third announcement is that I recently turned on uh, channel memberships because I wanted to be able to have custom emojis 
Uh, I really like, I think you saw some of the indie barking in the chat already. Uh, and let me show you um, some of the others that I have added. So I'm really excited about these. Uh, these are, uh, we've got a rainbow yarn mop uh, that I'm very excited about. We've got a Chemnitz colored heart. Uh, we've got me celebrating and of course indie barking. And so I thought that was really fun. And one thing I always get annoyed with my webcams of, my hair really is like the color up there. I took that color from like, I grabbed like a color pixels from, not this photo, but a photo of me. So my hair actually is red. It just always looks brown um, on these live streams. But I'm like, no, my hair is red. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So if, unfortunately, YouTube like won't allow me to give the emotes or the new custom um, loyalty badges uh, that we have here. They won't let me just give them to everyone. So I made it as cheap as possible. Uh, so if you join at the lab tech level, uh, you get access to all of the custom emotes and then you'll see like a little loyalty badge next to your name. Um, the longer, I guess, that you're a member, then it'll shift colors until oh, it eventually gets to a little rainbow heart in a uh, Chemnitz like two neck flask. Uh, I did not design the emotes myself. I commissioned an artist to do that. I did design the badges myself and those may be updated at some point. And I am completely out of focus, which is really going great, Rebecca. <laughs> um, and so please don't feel any pressure to, to join, um, but uh, it means that you get like I think once a month you basically get like a super chat, uh, your name is a different color in the chat, and so those are just some perks that I think are just features that are fun. But mainly, I wanted to be able to, in the chat, just do some Chemnitz hearts <laughs> myself like I just popped in. And so that's the main reason why I did it. Now, there are two different membership levels. There's the one that's 99 cents a month that gets you the badges and the emotes, and then there's another one that has uh, some perks that overlap with the Chemnitz Patreon, uh, and those are early access to Die Pop PS and access to the behind the scenes live stream that I do every month. Those are two perks that are part of Patreon rewards, but, and I'm happy to answer more questions about this, but I do have a blog post that's public on Patreon, um, how Patreon from Dippers, from YouTube, from YouTube memberships. And Judy Phillips, welcome so much. Thank you for becoming a Chemnitz Lab Tech. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so I dropped that blog post in the chat, but basically uh, there are more perks available on Patreon. The Patreon is not changing. But there is no way for me to integrate the like emotes and like badges with Patreon. And so in order for me to play with those, uh, because I wanted to use them myself, in order for me to play with those, I needed to turn this on. So I did. And there is a video like on the join button where I talk more in detail about that. But anyway, um, and I do already have uh, a couple more emotes that are, um, I mean, by the end of the stream, I think I might be able to add one more. And so we'll do a vote then. But let's get started with our dyeing. Uh, where's the member link? Aha. So right under the video, there'll be a join button, but I can also include a link right now. Become a member. Yeah, and I think that, and this isn't a feature I've tested yet, but I think that as like you hit like a one month, two month, three month milestone, like once a month, you get like a super chat thing that gets the sort of like go up in the chat in the live stream. So, um, but yeah, welcome everyone. And I, uh, what did I do today? Oh, I was um, weed whacking. And so now my nose is all itchy. But yeah, so let's get started to dye some yarn. Oh, yarn of my dreams. Welcome to being a member of the Lab Tech crew. <laughs> yeah, the Lab Tech is what I named the the one that gives you the uh, the badge and the emotes, and then the higher level that's there is postdoc. 
I was like, I'm running out of like community names to call things. <laughs> but you're all part of my lab group. All right. All right. But yeah, I thought that this would be fun. Okay. <sighs> Beth Tutin, thank you so much for becoming a lab tech. Thank you for joining. Um, let's see. All right. I've got tons of colors here. I've got brilliant yellow. I actually have two different stocks of brilliant yellow. I've got a little bit of pecan brown, a tiny bit of some true black, champagne, which I've used once, but um, that video won't come out until the end of June. I've got some of my muck dye that's pretty ancient, but I thought that that should come into play. I've got a hint of radioactive, which I just want to use up. I've got a little bit of moss green and forest green. The forest green actually might be a really good starting point for that green. Oh, I'm missing people. Julia Goetz, the, I hope Goetz, hopefully I pronounced your name right. Thank you so much for becoming a lab tech. And Melanie Crochets, thank you so much for being a lab tech. <laughs> I thought they were fun. Those are really fun too. All right. I've got some Caribbean blue, a little bit of some frozen. I've got a little bit of some Cabernet and some cherry bomb. And so looking at, oh, I don't see my, oh, I need to get this so that way I can see it. Nope. Where is it? Nope. That is not the right color. Oh, because I didn't, I didn't actually select it. There we go. It's like, I need to see it. All right. And that was, that little doorbell sound was Keith. Oh, cool. I fixed the shower. <laughs> Julie M, thank you so much for being a lab tech. Oh, Beth, I did. I'm glad I could pronounce it correctly. <laughs> I'm not good at phonics. Um, yours, oh, Julia, yours is Getz. Okay. Um, my maiden name is Rausch, which I think has German roots as well. And yeah, people have trouble pronouncing it. I got a lot of Rouches. All right. So I think, ooh, I'm going to move this to the other side so I can see it where I have my monitor. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. But yeah, so I, when I set up the custom emotes, I have two, I got six, even though I could only start with four. And then I added, how many? Oh, I have two, I have two others, but I think I'll be able to add one more before the end of the stream. And so I'll show those uh, when we're at like a waiting point. Hello from Sydney and woo, it's late. <laughs> Just because you can. I know, like, too bad. I think there's the emotes are too low resolution for me to do stickers or something, but I really like them. <laughs> All right. We are going to grab some water from the pre soak of our yarn. Let's grab. We're going to do some sort of like hand painting cold, then we'll add acid and heat to try to get coverage of the colors that we want but I'm gonna start with a little bit of water in here because we will need to dilute the dyes so we spread it out because as I've shown in some videos all of these stocks are one percent stock solutions if I was to take them and just directly pour it onto yarn the color would be very very concentrated so we're gonna want to dilute the colors with water to spread them out a little bit and I wish I had a version of those colors I wanted. Um, let's see, I think, let's try to go for which first? Let's do the green first, maybe. So, because I wanna use it up. And these clocks are clearly old, um, and so therefore the colors are not solid on them. So if we have some breaking, that is okay. But this looks like a reasonable amount of dye, but it really is not that much pigment, even though it is a fluorescent color. But I must have measured it for something because I'm like, I don't know why I have the tiniest little drop of it left. 
but we're like leave, trying to leave no guy behind. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It would probably cost a lot more, but yeah, the, the graphic artist, I probably could ask, um, or I could use them for something like super tiny. Um, but the artist was great. Exactly what I wanted. Okay, let's see. So I am going to want, I think we're going to go with the forest green a little bit because I was like, it's a bit of a teal, but it's a little bit dirty. And so we're going to pour, this is totally overwhelming that radioactive, but I just wanted to use up the color. And so for starting, I just sort of want to figure out what kind of colors will get us into the ballpark that we want. Okay, and so that looks a little bit too deep, but the green itself is not that bad. I do think though that we need to make it a little bit dirtier. So I just added another half cup of water. We'll be able to dilute it more. So I'm gonna go based on the hue. And I think, let's start adding some drops of Cabernet. Because I'm going, what is, is red opposite green on the color wheel? Orange is opposite blue. Yeah, red must be opposite green. So to make it more muted, I'm adding like this reddish color. We're going to do a whole like squirt now. Cabernet is pretty pigmented. Well, let's see. Oh, well, let's just clean that up. Ooh, ooh, that's pretty good. It might not be perfect. It might need a little bit more green or a little bit more blue, but it's a good starting place. Certainly I'll need to dilute it because I think that that color is deeper than I want. So I will end up adding even more water to this. But as we start to add it onto the yarn and see what it looks like on the yarn, then we can sort of shift it more. The one kind of asterisk that I've got here is that some colors do behave differently when they are cold versus hot when you first add them onto the yarn. And so that is an important thing to consider. Um, but so we made the green. It's more in this sort of indeterminate color here. But if I take a little bit, um, I think lighter, it could give us some of that sort of antique kind of oxidized copper feel. Uh, Robin uh de mastery i hope i pronounced that right thank you so much for becoming a postdoc thank you so much thank you so much for joining all right let's work on the brown will be easier let's do an orange let's do an orange so to start i want to kill this yellow because this this bottle is just almost done and so i'm going to pour this water that i have into here to just start clearing that out. Uh, I'm gonna rinse this out. Oh no, that was on spray mode. I already have a basin of water to put things in on the stove but yeah we're starting with and on the stove in the sink and i'm trying to peel off the tape all right now let's think instead of red i'm going for the cabernet again We'll see, I'll need to add more yellow probably, but we'll see where this starts to bring us. 
And again, the nice thing is that if I need to edit the colors or make more for whatever it is I'm trying to do, the fun thing about that is that I can pretty easily. And again, because of the way that the colors on the clock are, it's okay if it's not perfect. Uh, Caitlin Jones, thank you so much for becoming a lab tech. Don't I just love color theory? Color theory is not a strength, but actually tomorrow's video. Okay, that's, ooh, that's too yellow. Tomorrow's, let's do some cherry bomb. Tomorrow's video is all about color mixing. Um, and I don't mind like spoiling it. Um, tomorrow's video is sponsored by Alana Wilcox. And I follow one of her custom color matching recipes and it's really cool. Uh, I mean, this me saying this now is not sponsored, but I think I like Alana a lot, and the two of us may have some like collabs and stuff coming up. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see. Um, we are still, I would say, not that orange, but I'm adding these colors a lot slower than I added the yellow, mainly because <laughs> in all the color mixing I've done. Uh, colors require typically a lot more yellow than red, but Ooh, that's looking a little bit rusty, especially when I first add a little bit of it on, I think what I'm going to do, because again, we will be diluting these. I think before I add onto the yarn, I'm going to add some more yellow. This is Dharma's brilliant yellow. And I'm going to add less with some Cherry Bomb, which Cherry Bomb is not a primary color. Uh, Dharma's primary, there's like the fire red, but then if that's gone, I think they recommend using Chinese red is one that they recommend. That's not bad. It, it looks like it breaks. But it is certainly like rusty. Um, I mean, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but maybe I still need more red. Let's do a lot more red. So I, if I was going to go straight for pre-mixed colors instead of trying to mix them myself, for the orange rust color, I probably would have started with fawn brown or what saffron spice and maybe like gone somewhere in between that oh yeah that's pretty good i think that's not bad um we'll see what it looks like on yarn and then we can adjust more thank you thank you i'm glad you like the rust color we're just really going by feel and i think the thing that helped because people have asked about make, mixing copper colors and stuff in the past I think the trick here that helped me was adding a little bit of the Cabernet. So bringing in some of that maroon that's a little bit more pink, that is a bit more muted, rather than just straight red and yellow, made the orange less bright. Um, oh, crochet hat pattern. Um, Wait, uh, all right, I, yeah, I don't know about the, the, I missed some of the details about the pattern question, Julia. Um, but yeah, you're gonna go get some more yard work done? Oh, nice. Yep, I was, I hope we get more rain because I don't, I don't water the garden today. All right, uh, the champagne I'm just gonna use as is, and then we've got two browns, and let's see what status this muck, which is, cool toned brown but i have a lot of it and i haven't used it in a very long time and i have no idea how it's held up or what kind of color it's going to be looking like right now <laughs> uh what is this i don't want that food i want a different thing Like, I don't want to use a metal spoon and then knock things over. I don't know why it's looking almost a little greenish to me. I mean, it's kind of reading almost 
black on the paper towel. Um, I'm going to want to add some warmth to it for sure. Uh, especially because, yeah, I mean, who knows what has settled, but let's add some Cabernet and let's add some yellow. And this is from Hanukkah when I did color mixing. Not that the muck was black, but it's a little blue leading. Um, I got beautiful browns mixing orange and black. So that's sort of the direction I'm going with to make a nice brown. And actually, that's a pretty nice brown that we could use at, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to do all five colors that I pulled, but it's a good starting point and we can modify it further. As I said, I do have a little bit of true black and I also have some pecan brown, which maybe I should have used those first, but I've got a lot of that muck color. So let's go ahead uh, and start thinking about the actual colors. Okay, how am I gonna do this? I really don't wanna knock these over. I think that video was recent where I knocked stuff over. And so I'm not like traumatized, but let's go ahead and put these in a secondary container. Um, all of my dye stocks I store in a secondary container like this under a sink. So that way should like something happen or something drip down the side, uh, things stay contained. So we've got that. Uh, let's see. Oh, no worries for tuning in a little bit late. We're just getting started. We were mixing up our custom colors, which we're now going to take a look at on some yarn. And got my steam pan. We're going to kind of make this up as we go along. All right, here's 300 grams of Knit Pick Stroll that I did not squeeze out all of the water, but I could have, huh, I had a little bit of dye on my gloves. Um, I could have squeezed out more, actually. I was like, I had a little bit of Cabernet, I think, on my fingertips. I could have squeezed out more water, but I didn't want to do that because we will be adding dye in here. I was like, I know I should have rinsed off my gloves before we started adding color. And so my plan is we're gonna add the dyes, then add acid and then heat it. Um, but with the, I considered doing some kettle dyeing in the champagne color first, but I think instead I'm gonna wanna do that last because if we end up with some bare color and it's a little bit like tonal with tans, there's all those shadows and I'm totally fine with that. Um, I know, do I need a yarn mop? I'm like debating. Oh, uh, I don't know if we'll end up doing some speckling. We'll sort of see where time and hunger takes us. But I think what I'm going to start doing is adding on, ooh, what color do I want to do first? Let's do the green first and let's do the green like right here. You're mixing colors for the April dialogue and knew the jumping cat was downstairs. Oh no. Oh, the cat. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of this green that we mixed and add a bunch of water to this. Ooh, it's been a while since I've just done, I thought I'd like splash a little bit, which reminds me, I'm going to just put on my safety glasses. No harm there. I believe that a lot of yarn can hold without dripping if it's starting off just sort of damp half a cup to a cup so I've diluted a little bit of the green in 400 milliliters that's not looking green at all <laughs> what was that the green 
that is hilarious. I threw away the, the thing that I used, but what? <laughs> okay, so to the drawing board, to the drawing board, let's add, ooh, what do I wanna add? Oh my God. Or should I just start over? That's so funny. I think the Cabernet sometimes like shows up a little bit later. I think I added way too much. All right, we are gonna go back to the drawing board. Do some forest green. And like a bit of Cabernet, but not as much. This is looking green to me. Okay, now I'm gonna add some water here. Okay, so that, it's funny, it's closer, but not bright enough. So to brighten things, we're gonna add some yellow. Add some in there. And we're gonna add a little bit of some Caribbean blue, because I have more of that than the frozen. And that's not gonna work. That dropper is clogged. I'm gonna add a tiny bit there and a tiny bit. I'm gonna rinse out because a tiny bit went in here. There. And let's see. nice green but needs like more blue all right that's a lot of blue probably gonna regret that <laughs> oh man I was so like confident and that's probably way too much blue now I'm gonna check this on here Oh, bummer. Okay, why don't we... I feel like I'm playing mad scientist. Okay. I was on such a good track. And then derailed it. Okay. So let's see where we are with this color. Okay, at least we're like in a starting point that is decent. Okay, so what we're going to do Take this aqua that we have here. Actually, I'm going to pour more. We may make a mess. Okay, we're going to take this aqua. Then we're going to add some more yellow to it. I feel like I'm playing mad scientist. <laughs> okay, we're green. We're a brighter green than the forest green. We're going to add... A hint of some forest green. Okay, that made it a deeper green. And I'm not going to overdo the Cabernet. Add a little bit of that Cabernet. It's probably still going to be too green. That Cabernet like takes a minute. I'm gonna add a little bit more blue. Should get a new paper towel soon. <laughs> oh my 
gosh, you guys. I was like so confident. And then I was like, oh, that's not the right color. Okay, well, that's. Oh, I want to go in there. Okay. The blue is just so potent. Okay. Cabernet. Oh, don't turn purple. <laughs> okay, let's see. This is going to bring me mossy, though, isn't it? Yeah. Guys, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I can add some of that, like, original green color that's, like, a little bit black. But the problem was that, like... like a muted blue. I'm totally like not looking at the chat as I'm like, hmm, hmm. Okay. Let's see. Okay. That's some of that original color that we mixed that went astray. We've got two new colors, a deep green. Let me get some water. I think I just want this to be more aqua. Probably added just way too much yellow. I need more blue, I think, but I'm nervous. I'm nervous and I'm gonna add this back in. We're gonna go, if we get it, then we're gonna get it. That's a lot of blue. Okay, so here's the blue. I'm gonna go the other direction now. And add this color to the blue versus the other way around. That is way better. <laughs> okay, that is closer. I think a little bit more of this green. No, we're going for it. We're going for it. I was like, did I go do too much? I may have done too much, but I want, I still need to dilute it. Oh All right, we're going for it. It's going to be too concentrated. Oh my God. Oh, that's good. Um, it could be potentially a little brighter, um, but going over these other colors, that's going to give us some patina. That's good. We're good. I'm adding a lot more than I think I need to, but I kind of wanted to cover up some of these other bits. Like at the edge especially, that's good. It is looking like very, I don't know how much of that is like, what was just there before versus like on its own. That color, it's looking patinaed actually. I'm happier than I thought I would be. Okay, we finally got it. Uh, we have a lot of these other colors that I am gonna put off to the side. Like the bad greens. The bad greens are gonna go We'll use them, don't worry. Okay, and this is gonna go there. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm gonna sit down for a moment. <laughs> and then I can check out the chat. Oh, like this is like, this is why sometimes I don't do just color mixing by complete feel in streams. <laughs> Oh my gosh, especially like complex colors like this. And the hilarious thing is that like, again, this video is not sponsored, but like for starting recipes that can tweak, 
It's a reason why Alana's system works. Oh my god. Uh, actually, I'm curious. Ooh, that's pretty, the way that the color is going beneath. Okay, that's really pretty. I'm going to sit down so I can, like, read chat and collect myself a moment. <laughs> oh, my gosh, you guys. Oh, my gosh. Does forest green change with heat? Ooh, I don't know. We'll see, right? We'll see. I don't think so. But maybe... Hello, hello. You see a big lean don't die behind video in the near future? Well, I'll probably do that today. Um, if you want to end up with a lot of dye left behind, it would be a cool kettle dye to see some single color semi-solids games to complement the variegated. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think, did I even say Stroll is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon? I do have affiliate links to nitpicks probably in the video description, but oh man. I'm actually not that mad at it. So the color I kind of wanted was like that color there, which I'm not near. Um, and so then um, camera is looking a little bit bright, but I think that the different colors, we do have this sort of like rust patina kind of feel. So not going to be perfect, but I'm going for it. Thank you. I may not nail it quite well, but actually, all right, let's take a moment. Let's take a moment. And um, cause I think, I think I can add, uh, not let me. It may not let me add another. Oh no, I can add another emoji, okay. We're going to do a vote. I have two more emojis that I can add. Um, okay, so we have me laughing and then me hugging a heart. So I'm going to make a poll. Um, pop that poll up but these are these are the two other ones that I have um, I would say that the laughing and crying is the emote I use the most often in like my whole like just regularly but I don't know I've been having so much fun using these and just to see the ones that currently exist so these ones are available now for channel members these ones are the new choices um, But it's funny because when I was like texting in the group chat, I was like, I want to use, oh, I can't use my custom, my custom emote. <laughs> uh, the lighter chain match is pretty good from what you can see. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And hello, Teresa. Welcome for just a few minutes. Wait, I saw. Um, but yeah, we will, these extra dyes I'm mixing up, we will definitely use for sure. For sure. Um, all right, so I'm going to leave the pull up for a little bit and we're going to go back to the counter and I'm going to bring these with me. Both are cute. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I did show a picture before. Um, it does look, it is my actual hair color. I took a, um, yeah, it, even though my hair looks very brown. Oh no, I put it on the wrong thing. That's where I wanted it. Okay. Um, when will I be able to add the sixth emoji? Um, I think it depends on like the number of, of members I get. The more members I get, the more emotes I can add uh, is the way that like that works. But uh, once we get beyond like potentially adding six, uh, then I cannot. Um... So yeah, whichever one, one of these will be the fifth. The other one will be the, the sixth. 
And then after that, like, I'd have to, like, commission more. Uh, so, yeah. But I might, I don't know how quickly, because, <laughs> you know, the, the, they weren't, like, insanely expensive. But it's also not, like, cheap. <laughs> But really, like, I wanted to use them, and so that's a big reason why I did it. Um, but anyway, all right, let's get back. Let's get back to it. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness me. Okay, I am going to want another cup I can pour with. So what we're going to do is our green that was diluted, I'm going to set that aside there. And I'm thinking there's some darker browns, but I think I want to go for like a little bit of a lighter brown. We do have a brown that we mixed that might be a little bit purplish, so we might add mm, it's like as it's been waiting. Let's see, there's like a little ring there underneath this. This is why, this is why I add, um, something to something. Uh, this is why I have always have my dyes in a secondary container. Okay, let's see. If we dilute this, will we feel purple or will we feel like more of a tan? Well, that's going to be the real question. Maybe it feels brown. Let's see how it looks on yarn. feel kind of brownish maybe also a little bit purplish but you know what maybe we'll add some of our rust it's okay it's looking a little bit purplish brown is such a funny color um there's no acid in here yet by the way uh, brown is such a funny color because like light it can either look uh like yellow or oftentimes purple um, but I'm not actually that mad at it. And we're getting pretty good color penetration here. I'm going to add some more of this down. But we're going to go over it, I think, a little bit. Okay, I'm going to just add that diluted there. And let's do our rust. And hopefully... That's still looking kind of rusty to me, so that's good. I'm gonna take just a little bit of it. So this is really just a tiny bit. And we're gonna look at it there. That is looking sort of like rusty and it's not enough to like make a difference. To turn that purple more brown. So I believe that the color looked very, um, there we go. I believe that the color looked very, very brown. This is bringing it, I mean, this is making this area a bit more coppery. I believe it looked really brown, like when it was more concentrated, but sometimes just when you dilute something, it's not going to feel the same. But yeah, we're going by feel that not perfect <laughs> i definitely would be having a bit of an easier time if especially starting cold i would be having a little bit of an easier time if i had just gone for pre-mixed colors but you know what sometimes it's fun to oh that's nice yeah it's still feeling pretty like reddish versus brown i might add just some dilute pecan brown on top of it but let's go ahead and do the like rust section so i'm adding a bit more of this dye and we're going to add some water to spread it out one thing i probably want to do is start adding some acid soon Ooh, but that color is what i wanted Ooh. That is so rusty. 
Um, and I'll come, okay, I'm gonna need to add more. But I think, ooh, I think I should almost start adding some acid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some more of our rust color. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of white vinegar to it and then add water. And now instead of pouring, I'm bringing in my turkey baster so I can look for areas where it needs a little bit more of the color. And I can add that on. And so this is the first, oh dear, you know what I'm gonna do? not leave that in a container. This is the first acid that I've added in. I'm gonna need more paper towels. Okay, let's think, oh no. Okay, we're pushing, we're pushing green down. We may, not get a lot of the ivory that I wanted because that was something that I was like oh I should think about this and I didn't really so I'm adding acid now but you know what let's lean in to what this colorway is we have not preserved ivory in here but you know what? It is what it is. And let's see where we are. We're gonna like flip this around a little bit so we can add more of our, I think this is our like diluted greenish mixture. And so we're gonna go into this and we're gonna have like a rust to uh, teal colorway because we did not get the ivory cracked. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of this color. And add it in this lightest area. And we're gonna lean in to what the dyes are doing on here because you know what? This is not indicative of the entire image, but it's still gorgeous. It's still really, really gorgeous. So what I'm gonna do now, okay, what I'm gonna do now is I am gonna go ahead and we're gonna go and start heating this on the stove top. Um, so I'm gonna take a picture of it first, I think, because I would like a picture of it. Yeah, and we're and we're going to start heating it because if I had not added as much liquid volume, then those blues wouldn't have spread. This is really, really pretty. I'll post a picture of it to my Instagram stories in a moment and then I'll do away with the pole. So I will say this colorway does not feel totally clocks, but this feels like patinaed copper, 100%. All right, and I think that maybe what we'll do next Ooh, I should Soak a little bit more yarn. And I think for the brown, we will just have to, I think I'll use that pecan brown. I think the muck is too purple. I 
things. So one skein of stroll is way more pre soaked than the other, but we're gonna leave those in for a little bit. I'm gonna turn off the pole. And as I do that, I have some more yarn. Uh, let's set a timer over there and let's grab zip ties and I'll set up some more yarn while I come back. All right. Turn off these moats. Okay. Let's see. And the winner is Rebecca hugging a heart. All right. Um, I will do that uh, right now, I think. I think I can do that now. Uh, emoji. Um, I'm going to name it Hug. Select image. Where are these? These are in my graphic design folder, I think. Uh, I forget which version I'm supposed to upload. Cool. Oh my goodness. I think at the next level, I get to have eight. Oh wait, I can add another one now? <laughs> I thought I only got one more. Wait. Wait, I'll see, I, oh no, is it not there yet? How do I refresh this? Yay! <laughs> it's there, but it might let me add another one. I'm confused because I thought that I got one more, but maybe we hit like a bigger milestone than I thought. Uh, because then I feel silly about having to pull. Um, how many? Oh, guys, no, it's because we passed. Okay, so I knew that we we passed. Um, Yeah, we passed the second milestone, I guess. And so I get to add one more. <laughs> so now we get both. <laughs> well, I feel silly. Oh, uh, let me refresh my chat so that way I can see if I can use the new one too. Um, Yep. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh, because it doesn't actually tell me, like, I don't know how many members we're actually at because it'll update, like, the number tomorrow. Um, oh my gosh, you guys are awesome. So I think that, yeah, I think that we, like, went... I was like, oh, I know, like, once I get, like, two members, I can add another emote. But I'm going to have to commission some more. So, um, yeah, we'll have, I've been brainstorming some ideas. But, oh, Pam, thank you for the super chat. Thank you so much for the super chat. Oh, my gosh. But see, aren't they fun? <laughs> I may need to think and, like, reorganize the order they are. Um, so, the... I turned on channel memberships. So if you join um, the lab part, you'll see a little join button and it's uh, 99 cents a month. You get the loyalty badge and you can use the emotes. If YouTube would have allowed me, I definitely would have made it free. Um, but yeah, the, the 99 cents is the lowest, the cheapest YouTube would allow me to do it. But here's also a link. Um, there's a video where I talk about um, all of the perks. The lab tech level, uh, which is the 99 cent one, you get all the emotes. But all, both levels, you get all the emotes and the badges. But the lab tech level is completely distinct from anything I offer on Patreon, because there's no way for me to like have these streaming features through Patreon. But the, the postdoc level does have some rewards that overlap with the Patreon. So, so yeah, thank you all so much. 
Oh man, this is so fun. Like, I, I've been enjoying, oh, I'm supposed to be spinning up yarn. I'm enjoying using these like so much myself that that's what I ultimately decided. I was like, if I'm the only one that uses it, that's okay. Um, but yeah, I think that, yeah, I'll have to think about what other emotes we want, but uh, the, I would say that the design, well, I mean, like, see, I never used Bitmoji or anything, and so, like, seeing myself as emotes has just, like, tickled me, like, and made me just crack up, and then, uh, oh, Indy, oh, Indy, but yeah, I, I was, like, an Indy, an Indy barking one just felt so necessary, but you're not barking, you're whining. All right, so right here I have three skeins of Nomad's Marshmallow DK, and I'm gonna start pre-soaking this. And Pam Clark, welcome! Welcome to the Lab Tech membership, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go put this to pre-soak and deal with Mr. Ponce. Oh, you know, this yarn, this colorway is not what I originally was planning on but I like it. Okay, so I have a different idea for what we're gonna do next, I think. Here's the problem, he hates it when it's raining, and so therefore he's gonna go outside and like, yeah, then come back. Maybe because I was weed whacking. So I'm allergic to grass. <laughs> I'm allergic to grass, which uh, makes lawn care challenging. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so in the, it's not raining very much, but he hates it when it's raining. And so therefore, he's going to be like, oh, mommy, it is too, too wet out here. I have to come back in. So... Yeah, he's a funny puppy. All right, but I, in, probably by the time the timer goes off, we'll try something with the stroll. And I think this time I'm gonna try to do a lot of champagne. And then we're gonna add just little hints. Ooh, maybe we'll do this warm. Maybe we'll do this warm. Uh, you can see me waffling here. No, we'll do it cold. And I'll just try to keep the water level pretty low. Um, so yeah, we'll start with the champagne and then we'll add little pops of some brown, some of that rust and some of that green. So it'll be a little bit more random, but we'll do that in the steam pan. And then we'll start playing with some Leave No Die Behind. And yep, Indy's asking to come in. Oh, have fun gardening. Indy, I, I hear you. No, I, no, that wasn't a real poll. I hope it didn't put anything up because, yeah, no, that's not a real poll. <laughs> it's like, poll, yes or no? Here's the results. Oh my gosh. Oh, Indy. Hey, do you want to go up to the third floor? Do you want to go upstairs? Go up. Oh no, he's going all the way up. I think he's looking for Keith. So yeah, but I think yeah, we'll try we'll try something like that, and maybe we'll go ahead and get that started. Um, even while we are oh no, the stroll was pre-soaking. That's why. Hi, boo -boo. Yes, go drink some water. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'll have to find like my, like what other ideas I had at some point. Um, but thank you all so much. Uh, I thought that it would be like really fun. And then especially with like spring mini seed mini series coming up, uh, I knew I was gonna wanna like use these uh, in, the, in the chat because I think, I think I should be able to join the premieres every night. 
I should check. I'm planning on trying to join the premieres every night. Um, yeah, I, hopefully, hopefully. We have a tour. Oh no, that's Sunday. That's before it starts. So yeah, that's that's good. Hi, buddy. I I know. I I, I know what you want, and I'm not giving it to you. Hi, Mr. Cutie. Okay, but you're wet, so I'd rather say come. Well, there you go. I'd say you could up, but I don't want you to up. I know. Normally, so normally if I'm filming or working. He just hangs out in like the front hall on the rug, or sometimes by the back door, or he goes up and sleeps in Keith's office or something, even if Keith's not here. But I'm streaming, and so therefore he's like, mummy, I'm a needy. Yeah? Or are you a little bit wet and are you mad about that? Yeah? He also knows what stays in the closet, and so he keeps like looking at that, but his fans want to see him. <laughs> <laughs> I do have another like indie based uh, idea um, and what was another oh I think that did I start making a list of other ideas for emotes uh, if I did I don't know where I did that I'm gonna have to turn down the stove oh um, oh yeah maybe a face palm <laughs> I was like, what emotes do I use the most? Yeah, he definitely wants to chat. Although, I hate to say it, that if you all were here in person, he would be barking his head off. And yeah, he doesn't like people. Um, okay, but you know what I can do? I can clean up a little bit. <laughs> then I can do to get ready for the next one. So I have only played with champagne a tiny bit. It is really pastel. Like if you look at the color in this bottle, maybe it looks a little bit like the yellow, but it's like super not pigmented. Um, have I ever tried to spin his fur with some Robin? No, his staple length is a little bit short. I have collected his fur to use as roving, but I haven't actually tried spinning it yet. Turns out, I'm not good with a hand carter, but someday if we have space for me to finally get a blending board, um, if I've like space to store it without having another cabinet thing that's just out all the time, then I think I could use a blending board um, and and like incorporate it with some. It definitely needs to be blended with something. Face palms are most used emoji. Yeah, the laugh crying. It's super high up there. Um, but we can make like my flask a little like face. But let's see. Okay, the, the colors are striking so well on our first yarn. Okay, let's. I don't think we're gonna use. What do I have that I can. Um, oh, I know. I'll bring it over to show you, and then we'll put it back on the heat. Is that on camera? Barely. Barely on camera. Um, I'm not going to try to move it too much closer, but I did want to just sort of check to see we're doing and there are some lighter patches but I kind of love it oh there's a bigger one uh, I know that this is not as visible but here there may also be but those ones I don't mind those like super pastel -y ones okay I think I just want a little bit more rust uh, what do I have? Oh, here is this. This is the rest, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now 
we're going to just let this go heat for, we're going to get, we're going to do this too. Of course, now that it's hot, that's going to stay dark. That's the perk of, oh no, I've, I've diluted that some. All right, we're going to go let this heat for 30 minutes now. Uh, Okay. I was like, how's that for a little trivet? And we're going to get started on a second colorway. And I do want to see if the squeeze bottle will let me. What are 1% depth of shade of, uh, of the champagne would look like just straight on yarn? Because otherwise, we're going to get a pot and do it that way, I think. Um, and we'll do it in a kettle so we can get more coverage of it. So yeah, game time decision, especially because we're going to need the kettle anyway, because we've got all that leave no die behind stuff. So thank you. I know it's really too bad. I don't have a recipe for that first colorway and the breaking and everything because of the different like variations and the combinations like I adore like it looks like rusting copper like it's it's amazing okay so this time I just have 200 grams of stroll and I'm gonna shake up the champagne okay so that is the 1% depth of shade on the yarn. It's like next to no color. Um, but we're gonna do a little bit of a quick kettle dye. So I'm gonna fill up a kettle. And this doesn't have to be perfect, but the reason why I'm going to do it this way with a kettle is because if I were to start just with um, adding the water volume I would need here to cover things up and hopefully, okay, good. If I was doing enough water volume to get good coverage, I wouldn't then have enough If I was doing enough to get good coverage, oops, I wouldn't, like, there would be too much water that the other colors would spread more. And so we're going to do this, remove the yarn, have it, like, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start with a quarter cup or about 60 milliliters of this 1% stock solution. Now, this proportion is the same proportion that I use, say, with navy uh, to glaze. So think of that for a moment. And the color difference is going to be super subtle. It will exist. It is going to make it more ivory, um, even though like the yarn is off-white and a lot of it is striking even without acid. Uh, so actually, I think I might add a little bit more, but let's go ahead and add two tablespoons of white vinegar. Yeah, I might not even really need to heat this. Ooh, it's kind of like broken in some areas. I see a little bit more red in some spots. Let's go ahead and do a little bit more. Um, I'm going to add one more quarter cup. Now, this time we have acid in here. 
So it would be a tiny bit wasteful, but I would like to do like an 8% depth of shade of ivory, or sorry, or champagne. There's a few different off-white colors. Um, but this is handy for like people dyeing silk and other things like that. And so it's just gonna start us with this more pastel base, like, a little bit more like antique it feels a little bit like tea a little bit like tea and what's funny all right i'm gonna let this sit in here for a little bit we're not gonna bother adding any heat um i will probably add more acid so we have acid in the yarn already for when we add the colors but the color the little bit color that there is is striking to the yarn and so that's working really really nicely and then the benefit of not heating it up yet means that uh, by the time, um, it just means it's like, it gives me a non-hot pot to deal with right now. So that works out. All right, we're gonna wait, not 24 minutes, but we're gonna wait a little bit. Uh, make myself bigger, good chat. Um, let's see. Have I ever used Jacquard Ecru? Not really, I think I've swatched it. I don't think I've actually used it. Um, so there's a few other colors. I think there's like vanilla cream. Uh, let's go to here. Uh, window capture. Oh, card acid dies. Okay. Um, we'll do that and we'll make this smaller. There we go. Uh, so yeah, the Ecru won't let me. Ooh, well, let me add that there and then go to the Dharma color. So that's the card Ecru. Let me see if it'll let me do the Dharma. If it'll leave the Jacquard Ecru on my little like palette. Probably not. No. Okay, so Dharma has vanilla cream. Ivory. And champagne. are the three that, um, so the vanilla cream is definitely like a pale yellow. Ivory is way more ivory. The champagne is a little bit deeper. Um, you wouldn't be able to resist doing a dip dye, yeah. Um, felted wool, I need a silicone trivet or a felted wool trivet. I have a felted, like, I don't, I don't have like a good trivet that's for dedicated dye stuff, if that makes sense. I have a lot of trivets, but, like I use them with like food and stuff. So I just need some Chemnitz ones. I should get, um, I should have added some, we're gonna have some Ikea stuff coming. Um, I should have added some cork trivets and then I could have just written Chemnitz on them and used them like that. Uh, but anyway, the, um, the champagne is really nice. It's very subtle. Now, are premix pastels like expensive for what they are? Yeah. Now granted, Compared to like indigo blue, which for two ounces is $8, these pastels are $2.25. Same with platinum. Dharma does adjust the prices of their acid dyes based on the actual, I think, material costs, which is nice. Um, I think Jacquard, all the dyes are the same price across the board. So if you buy the Ecru, you're paying for a lot of filler. Um, but at the same time, mixing one of like, to, if I was gonna, you saw how much trouble I had trying to get that green. If I was, if we had something that I felt was good and then it like shifted, um, Cabernet. But if I was trying to get, um, if I was trying to mix this ivory color on its own, like if I used just like a little bit of yellow, it wouldn't be muted enough. And so there would be some finessing there and therefore like, you know, it's, it's worth it. Um, to get this. Use a piece of wood. 
Uh, oh, the one I have is too big. Uh, what I've used, I'm going to get up and we'll get to it. What I've used in the past, sometimes is I'll use my hot plate as just a trivet. Um, I keep looking at that color and falling in love. So I think that if I just wanted like ivory yarn, I would not have used as much of the, what was this color? Hello, Rebecca, of the champagne as I did here. Um, but I don't mind. It's like looking a little bit too orange or yellow, but I don't mind. It feels kind of antiqued at the moment. And I'm digging it. Okay, so, oh, I didn't end up adding more acid. Hmm. That's okay, we'll add, we'll go ahead and do that. Because I want there to be enough acid on the yarn that the colors that we add start to strike where we put them. So, ooh, maybe we'll do a cold dip dye for one of the leave no dye behinds. Bad. Oh my gosh, I I didn't see the misspelled word, but ooh, this is kind of dip dyed. It is deeper down there. Uh, spell check is the bane of my existence. I am so bad, so so bad at spelling. Not a strength of mine at all. Uh, now in high school, one of my teachers thought I was dyslexic. And I'm not dyslexic. I do technically have like a like info processing thing, but like I never needed, like I was a fast test taker and stuff. So I didn't, and I always had good grades. So it's not like I needed extra time or anything, but yeah, it was handy to find out, I suppose. Okay. So we've got this base color, which definitely, again, is more, uh, a little bit more yellow and orange than our base is there. You know, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, sand dune, may have been a really good choice for this, but it is what it is. Okay, so now I want to grab, I think I'm gonna use Pastor Pipette, maybe. Oh, and more. Okay, so Pastor Pipettes are like mini turkey basters. Um, Okay, let's do, we're gonna get a little bit of this blue color. We may wanna dilute it. But also maybe not. So it's not as much that we're going for speckles here as it is we're just adding some hints of some of these colors. on the backdrop. And it's gonna spread a little bit and that's totally fine. And we'll rotate the yarn. Maybe I'll end up steam setting this. I haven't quite decided. But because we're not adding a lot of liquid. I thought about doing more of a big pour, but I'm glad I'm doing it this way. And where's the pecan brown? And take a little bit of just that. And this one, I think I will dilute a tiny bit. So I would say maybe we're closer to like a fifth a 0.5% stock here. And the placement of these colors is going to move once we um, 
like flip it and stuff. But this is like a true brown pigment versus a mixture. So it actually reads as brown. Uh, yeah, I want to grab a photo. Where did, oh, there's my phone. Yeah, oh, the other color is still so, I don't think the other color changed much. Oh, I never posted the picture to my Instagram stories. I'll do that now. Um, but the, uh, I don't think the color on the stove has shifted too much. Nope, I do not want any things like that. Nope, let me rotate that. Okay. And... Okay, and I want to do another, oh, I haven't taken a picture yet. I'll take a picture of this one as well. Who knows where it'll end up? I mean, not the picture. I just mean the colorway in the end. I love that I try to take a vertical picture and my phone's like, nope, you need to rotate it. All right, I just added those to my Instagram stories. Uh, so you can see it a little bit closer. So yeah, the the downside of what we have going on here right now is that I can't exactly go set it like this. So we'll have two choices. We can add more water to do an immersion set of the color. And I'm gonna tr I'm trying to flip it without moving things a ton. I do want to expose like some areas where maybe I didn't add much color at all before. So that way we can add just like a hint more. But again, we don't need a lot. I don't really want to like press a ton, but I also don't mind if the colors spread. So yeah, let's just do some lines. It's like scribble light painting today. I like this. Uh, so we could steam set it or we could let it sit for a little bit and then I could add water to it, which would cause some of these colors to spread potentially, but maybe not a ton because we have a lot of acid in here already. So I will set up a poll for that in a moment probably. Now I'm just doing what I always do and checking for like large uninterrupted segments of white. But it's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. <laughs> it's very random and yarn moppy feeling. So yeah, I... I like it. And this one has the colors more in the proportion of the clocks. And actually this would work really, really well with the other colorway as well. So let's go ahead and do a little poll. Uh, how do I do a poll? Um, how should I heat set this subtle speckled yarn? Uh, steam set. Okay. Oh no. Immersion. Okay. I'm gonna let you guys decide. <laughs> oh, yeah, because I cannot decide. And so sometimes if I can't decide, then you can all help me decide. Uh, oh goody. That's gonna be delivered. Um, goody, goody. But yeah, it's sort of like, I, I did this for a yarn mop in a video recently where I was like, I could steam set it or I have this hot dye bath, I could put it in. And sometimes it's amazing how much colors can strike when there's acid already in the yarn before you even heat set it, just with a little bit of time. You've been watching on mute because your kids are doing standardized testing. <laughs> Wait, 
Um, you're guiding groups for someone who's trying to say. Oh my goodness, I'm not going to read that, but that's making me crack up with the like misspelling stuff. <laughs> We're misspeaking. Oh gosh, we do that so much. I do that so much. And like, especially, especially when I'm texting an email, it's not so bad. Um, but other times, like, other times it can be pretty bad. Um, oh, phony notifications. Oh. Oh my gosh. We're having Keith's lab group over for like a, a barbecue yesterday. It's going to be 100 degrees this weekend in Massachusetts. The forecast for Saturday is 99 degrees. I would totally, totally set up a cool that um, or something if we weren't having people for like just to be out then, if we weren't having people over tomorrow night. But we are having people over tomorrow night. Um, and I am very, very excited actually, but uh, we haven't done a barbecue with people besides like parents in a really, really long time. Um, but solar die set, seriously. Seriously. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that watching these like provides inspiration. That's one of the, the goals is to do like, like just some kind of thing to, mainly I'm trying to push myself to do color combinations that maybe I otherwise wouldn't do. Uh, and so that's a lot of fun, but I'll leave the poll up for like another minute or so, but it looks like we're probably going to steam set. Um, oh, 99 degrees. Oh uh, yeah, but it's going to be so hot and I like am just flabbergasted. Uh, what was I looking for? Cool. I need to get my eyes because that is not something that I've done in a while. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. Um, we're having a heat wave come through Florida. They're saying temps as high as 110. Um, your high's going to be 48 on Saturday. Oh, gosh, that's coming here next to them. If it's in Minnesota. Yeah, it, because it was funny. Like, I pulled up, so we're having this barbecue. And I pulled up, like, search for the weather with my zip code. And I was like, oh, my gosh, it's going to be 90 on Friday. Like, we're going to need, like, tons of ice. Like, we have, um alcoholic popsicles and regular popsicles. So I was like getting all prepared and she's like, it's not going to be 90. It's going to be like maybe high seventies tomorrow. Not bad. But then I looked today to see, cause it's like in the fifties to see if the kids needed like pants or jackets or whatever. And I'm like, Keith, it's going to, oh, but I had looked originally and for some reason it showed up as Washington DC when I was going to be 90. And so Keith's been making fun of me. So when I'm like, it's going to be 99, he's like, Rebecca, are you looking in the right zip code? And then he looks, he's like, oh, it is. <laughs> oh, 64 in the UK. Um, 64, I, well, I think that has to be Fahrenheit because 64 um, Celsius would be absurd. Um, <laughs> I was thinking like, oh, I was like, I, you know, it's funny. I used to be really, really good at doing conversions. Uh, because like in the lab, like we would have, um, you know, cold rooms and stuff and everything is in Celsius when you're doing like scientific stuff. But in terms of like weather, you know, with like, if my sister-in-law is like, oh, you know, it's going to be like 40, <laughs> like I, my brain can't wrap that. 18 C. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my head can't. 
transparent wrap around it in the same in the same kind of way when thinking about like what's where and whatnot. Um, all right, I'm going to turn off the poll. We will steam set it. There may still be some spread of color and some color transfer, uh, but that'll be fine. You're worried about your veggies. Ah, same. I just planted mine last weekend, and part of me was like, ooh, it's a little bit late, but at the same time, like, it's not late. <laughs> uh, let's use the bigger one, because the other one has acid in it. We get this set up, and there's only five minutes left for the other colorway, so we may use that pan and water to do something else. But we're gonna start doing some leave no dye behind stuff in a moment. All right, so this yarn, which is super subtle and much more clocky. I totally could go and do some um, like black speckles. I just, it's so humid. I don't feel like wearing my respirator mask. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go for it. And if I'm not happy with the coverage, we can always add more dye and steam it again. Now, I did not double check that my steamer basket was nice and clean. I had some like random color transfer recently which was so annoying uh, because I think I had steamed something in the pan. I wiped the basket out. There must have been some liquid on the bottom. So a champagne yarn I was talking about got some color transfer on it. So the next time I dyed with that same champagne color, um, what I did was put it inside a Ziploc bag before steaming it, an open Ziploc bag. All right. We okay. We're gonna do a little bit of leave no dye behind, but then I'm not gonna use all the clock colors that I have, the like successful ones, but we're gonna start with some of the unsuccessful colors. And I'm just gonna wipe this out. Oh, oh, we might do one more pan colorway. We'll see how that goes. But let's bring our kettle. <clears throat> so this is cold. I think this has like six tablespoons of vinegar or something in it. This is what I had done the ecru in. Um, Yesterday in Canada, you had snow. Oh my gosh. Oh, I should put my gloves back on. All right, we're going to bring in two colors. And I think, did I just drip? Okay. I'm going to take this green that I had mixed. That's a lot of dye. You may regret that this is the small pot. And we're going to dip dye into it cold. Okay, I have 300 grams of the Marshmallow DK Oh, that's pretty, but I think it is mostly, well, no, actually, this one had a lot of the blue in it. Um, what was I saying? This is the Marshmallow DK from Nomad. And I don't know how quickly the yarn is going to soak up this color. I don't mind if we don't really get a dip dyed effect, but I did think it would be fun if we definitely got a darker section on here. So as like we're dipping, if I go in a little bit further, you can see that that's already starting to look a little bit lighter. I should shift things. I'm going to move this. Uh, that's kind of a color that 
was not perfect. Oh, the problem with moving this a little bit closer for you is that I can't really see <laughs> what I'm doing as well. But yeah, if it's funny because it's definitely like lighter, but I think what I want to do is leave this yarn in here for like, okay, that, that timer is about to go. I'm going to set a timer for 10 minutes. And then at that point, I'll set a timer for 15 minutes or 20 minutes for the steamer basket. Um, I'm going to check on our, like, um, oxidizing copper is looking fantastic. I just turned off that heat. Um, I'm going to let it cool a tiny bit, but then I'll bring that over. Hopefully this isn't going to wick up too much, but I want like to let some of those colors absorb. Um, and then this color that's more blue, I'm going to add it and pour it on top. Um, I'm going to try to have the lightest color mostly at the top of the pot and I'm going to pour it on instead of dip dyeing in a second color. And then we'll go and heat set that as well. Um, so that's my plan. That is my plan. It looks a little like sage leaf. It's definitely, it looks a lot like forest green. But at one point when I was playing with this, I was like, oh, this is too green. And then I started going the other direction again. But right here on camera, it's looking pretty spot on for the clock. So I don't know what I was doing when I had my little like color panic. But I mean, that's the fun thing about doing things live. Because if I was doing this for an edited video, I would start to freak out over like how hard and it would be to make that cohesive to edit. And so, yeah, I think that I, when I do like color mixing in videos, I either have a sense of the two colors I'm going to mix together and what it might do. I don't try to do like many colors in a recipe unless I have a recipe like you'll see tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I tried to start with somewhere where I like, or I'll, I do like a big like triad thing and then use that information to help me shape where things go. But, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm checking. Cool. But yeah, uh, what else is going on? Um, so I have finished editing three of the SMSMS videos. This is where I'm like, time, time is short, time is short. But I have, just have to film intro and conclusions for the fourth, so that should be a really quick edit. And then the fifth will be done soon. Um, or hopefully I'll finish the fifth tonight or tomorrow. That's the plan. Um, and so then I'll be in really good shape for the next week. But the good news, uh, as I, I'm going to go peek at my schedule. The good news is I think I have a lot of videos ready to go after the week. So I'm not stressing about that as well. But as you, many of you, actually, I may not have talked about it here on the public channel. My camera broke. <laughs> so that's the other thing that's been going on. My camera broke. The camera that I have filmed all 370, well actually I've probably filmed 386 episodes of Die Pot Weekly on this camera, plus special series, plus Leave No Die Behinds, all kinds of stuff, all on the same camera, and it died. Kind of. Uh, there's a toggle on the back that lets you switch between like filming video mode and then taking still images, and you can't toggle it anymore. So it's stuck on video mode. So I'm going to need to send the camera to Canon to, um, to like repair it, which maybe it'll be a cheap repair. Maybe they just need to take it apart and like, they'll be able to get it unstuck. The more I think about it, the more amazing it is that the camera has lasted this long. And you know, I probably given that like with a, 
I probably could have gone for a mirrorless camera for filming video because the LCD screen is on there and so it's not using the mirror. But when I'm taking pictures, I like to take pictures with like the viewfinder and use the mirror. Like I prefer that than trying to take pictures with the LCD screen. Like I like holding the camera up to my face and like moving around, you know, I don't like, I like the support of that. Um, oh, Randy. <laughs> I think that it had some forest green, some Caribbean blue, a tiny bit of radioactive, uh, and some Cabernet, but yeah, that maybe some yellow, the proportions are all over the place. Um, very much dying by feel today. Uh, but yeah, so the camera thankfully is stuck on video mode and I'm going to reduce the heat on the steamer basket. All right. So thankfully the camera stuck in video mode so I can still shoot, but my old camera died because the shutter stopped working which can happen after you take however many photos. And so I'm not sure how doing video could wear out that part or not, but certainly I've taken a lot of photos on this camera as well. So I was like, well, there's a chance that if this broke, something else could be close to breaking and then I could be without my main camera. I do have a backup, but I don't like it as much. <laughs> I don't like it. Uh, I used to love it, but I, I felt like a kid trying to ride a bike for the first time, even though it's the same like model, same brand. It's just little things like the correction for like white balance and exposure and things were all different. And so I didn't have an innate quick feel of what I needed to do to change things because the settings were different. So I have ordered a camera replacement, which should arrive tomorrow, but I haven't wanted to film anything new because I'm like, I still have interest and conclusions to film for the SMSMS. Yeah, for the SMSMS. And so, yeah, I've been in this like holding pattern with that. And it's a bummer because like on one hand, the new camera will be an upgrade. I will replace, I will try to repair this camera, which means I might then have two backup cameras. <laughs> but, you know, actually the thing I may not have liked about the other camera might be because the lens. Like to take still pictures, I wasn't transferring the lens back and forth. And so I really like, it could be the lens that is one of the things that I love less than the like camera body. But anyway, yeah, it was just a lot of stress about that. Uh, so new camera will be here, um, hopefully tomorrow. And then next week we'll be very busy with the spring mini skiing mini series going on. But during the daytime, I should still be able to film videos and stuff and get some of that going, but that was, I don't know, the new camera will be able to shoot in higher resolution, which is good. Like, that's a good thing. Like, this is my your job, right? Having like a better camera is a good thing. But then on the flip side, I'm like, I just really like my camera. And so it makes me sad. Cause it's like an extension of my arms, you know, and yeah, but I'll, I'll get it repaired because if it's even, yeah, it, I think it's worth it to get it repaired because otherwise like I'm not going to throw it away or anything. Um, the new camera is the EOS 90D. I really like the camera as a whole. And so I wanted to stay in that line. I looked a little bit about changing and that's why like now that I've ordered the other one, I'm like, so I use it mostly just for filming. Maybe I should have gone with mirrorless. But it's the camera I know, and so I wanted to stick with that. And plus, like, I want something that can use the lenses that I have. <laughs> That's pretty important to me. Uh, and to be fair, like, I sh typically, when I'm taking pictures for the shop, I will film a portion of the conclusion, swap it over, take pictures, and then swap back and then film more of the conclusion. I sort of, like, alternate back and forth as I'm doing that. And so then having to bring in a whole separate camera to take the still pictures, which like, there's only a couple I needed, but I was like, oh my gosh, they're coming out like so bad. <laughs> I was just like, this is going so poorly. Like what, like the auto white balance and then like the correction, I was like, the numbers are just way off. 
because of probably some amount the lens and like the sensor and the camera and stuff that's just got a different baseline. So you have a 60. Oh, nice. You know, I considered I considered getting another 80D, but the 90D is only a tiny bit more expensive, and it means I'll be able to shoot in 4K. Not that like that resolution is like super super important, um, but given like yeah, it seemed like a reasonable reasonable upgrade, even if it means the files will be bigger. Oh dear. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I guess it's conceivable. Oh man, yeah, I'm gonna have to think about what I'm gonna do because let's go start this. Oh dear, it is dripping. It is wicking color. But not color, just water. So annoying. I'm gonna put my gloves back on. I still see some color in there. This is really, really pretty in its own right. But we're gonna arrange that in there a bit once I get my hand dry. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, but I wasn't, what I'm gonna have to think about is like, I suppose there's no harm in like using, I'm just a little nervous about having some videos that have footage from both cameras for some reason. But actually, you know what it is? I should just make sure if I'm finishing up videos that have already been started, I can shoot those in the same resolution I'm shooting on the ADD. And then that shouldn't be an issue, hopefully. So, yeah, but I was like, the AED could die at any moment. Um, just curious, have you gotten the, li the latest update from Nick Crate yet? Um, I can talk about that in a moment. I did not get the update for some reason, <laughs> but uh, I did not get the update from Nick Crate, but uh, people posted about it in my Facebook group, so therefore I did see it. Okay, so we're going to arrange the yarn with this lightest color on top. Okay, sort of spreading it out a bit. And so this color that we add on will travel down into the pot as well, but I think it'll be fun. So this is the original color that I mixed to be green and then I started modifying it a bit. And then I put it on the yarn and I was like, that's like purple. That wasn't very green. So, I think maybe I added too much Cabernet, something to it, but it's like bluish black almost. I don't know. So my main knit crates are definitely on the way, but whoop. so yeah, some of this will go down a bit more, but we're basically space dyeing cold, adding this on, and I don't know what we're going to end up with. So we've got that. I am going to add... little more acid and we're going to take this to the stove and start heating it up. Which means I kind of have to move the steamer basket a little bit. Oh my god, you're going to be heavy. Now the only bummer about this is I wish I had set it up on the stove a little bit because if I had done that then I wouldn't have had to move it sloshing the dye around. Um, to go over to the stove. Um, but let's go ahead and look at, how oh, hot are you still? The yarn that we dyed first. And 
and this is our like patinaed copper colorway here. So, so pretty. And all the color, oh, there's a little bit lighter patch on that one. All the color has absorbed, um, which is great because there's Caribbean blue in there. And so I really like it. I really, really like it. I'm going to set this aside to cool. And then I guess I'm going to have to wash both pans anyway. Uh, how warm are you? I don't want to melt the tablecloth. Okay, it's warm, not hot. Eh. Let me set it aside for a tiny bit off of the stove, which is still a little warm. Yeah. And then we'll do one final colorway with a fun yarn base that maybe you'll be able to uh, guess what I would have picked. Because I kind of had to. I think it's been a while since I've used it in a dialogue. Ooh, it's not in focus at all. Is that because I held the thing up? Uh oh. Or did the camera die? Uh, no exposure, focus. Okay. You know, that, that that's where we are right now. Thank you, I'm glad you like the patina colorway. Don't be nervous, it'll be fine. Okay, so knit crate. Let me see, because I found, I found the announcement on on their blog think. Nope, I don't want the early. No, not magazine. Let me find it. Um, blog. Because see, blog is different. <laughs> oh my gosh, because Sorry, it's my browsing. Because blog, it's knitcrate.com slash a slash blog is different from magazine. <laughs> Beth, I think you got it. I've got Zebra yarn. <laughs> All right, so the Knit Crate pricing announcement. Um, and so I am, before like I go into this, I am a Knit Crate affiliate. I do have a affiliate code, chemnitz 20 which I believe this month will get you a free month if you're a new subscriber to the subscription. Um, what is going on with my hair? I don't know. Uh, so like I am an affiliate, but I have no problem calling them out when I feel like they deserve it. And I don't know if they really deserve it from this. Um, but so over the last few months, our team has continued to focus on coordinating the best possible monthly and quarterly crates for our members. This has given us the opportunity to create additional options to make a Knit Crate membership accessible to more makers. As with every business, we all must also review our product offering and costs associated with them and make adjustments where needed. We are finding ourselves in a place where a price adjustment is necessary for us to continue producing the products we've come to know and love. This adjustment will allow us to include more of the hand-painted yarns and premium fiber blends many of you have enjoyed and knit. Changes like this are never easy, especially having lowered prices just a few months ago but it is necessary and will help us provide a broader variety of yarn to our members. With the many options available, we are also confident that members will find the Knit Crate membership that works best for them. We are excited to announce that our team is currently working on plans for our 2023 crates with the help of our friend, Hannah Theason Howard. I'm not sure how you pronounce her maiden name. Um, many may remember Hannah from her previous time here at Knit Crate. She's consulted with us to coordinate some of our themes, color palettes, and yarns, both for our upcoming months this year and next year. Keep watching for the early month preview to see Hannah's work with us and what's coming next. And so here are the new pricing. And the pricing is going to start for renewals on June 1st and also new subscriptions as of May 20th. Now, 
I did not get an email about this. They, since they send me the knit crate for free, I get like a special like knit crate, like sometimes an influencer kind of, I guess, email. But I don't always read them because sometimes they have spoilers and I don't like spoilers because I want to be able to react to the yarn like as I see it, right? Like I want to react to what I see and give my first impressions. Uh, and so I try not to like get spoilers. But I didn't get this email. And I think that I'm glad that it sounds like they emailed most customers about the price change. What I would like to see is I would like to see something in the crate themselves about the price change. Because when someone receives it, that information, not everyone that gets the crate necessarily checks their email or reads the emails. So this information should be printed in the physical package, which it hasn't been in the past. Um, and so that is like my one criticism, but again, I have not received my made crates yet and I haven't opened them. So I don't know, uh, if that's going to work, but so the price is the new price will be 33.99. What is the current? Okay. So just the fluff. Oh, okay, so that's a big jump again. The current Knit and Crochet Monthly Club is $25.99. So that's going to be $8 increase. The shipping and handling seems like it's the same, but I think that this is higher than the increase that happened like a while back. Um, I mean, for 200 grams of yarn and two patterns, close to $40 for domestic shipping isn't unreasonable. Like certainly like I have like mystery samplers that are more expensive than that, but it's a little bit, it's a little bit different. Um, oh, of course I'll sh share my Knit Crate affiliate link. Um, one moment. Uh, let's see videos. Communication should have that in here. I don't know. We'll see if it'll let me. Yeah. Okay. There's my knit crate information. And again, I think my code uh, will get you a free first month if you're a new customer. It was 39 before. It's a big jump, but I guess what someone said, because again, I don't go watch any like reveal videos and stuff because I don't, and sometimes they give a lot of information there. Someone said that in order for them to bring back some of and start doing some of the kinds of colorways that I've been asking for, and I think others have been asking for, like more speckles, more variegated yarn. Um, you know, their, their prices go up. And I will say, like, I have not done it yet, but with Etsy increasing prices, like, um, over in over this year, Knit Crace has raised the prices on yarn. Wool to Die For has raised the raised the prices on yarn. Wool to Die For's price increase is very mod was very modest, but shipping prices are have gone up from where they used to be. And I don't think I've adjusted my prices in my shop since it's been a while. Um, the last time Etsy, Etsy increased their fees and added the fees on the shipping. So that, that was years ago when I last raised my prices. So I may need to do a price increase, but like, it would be like a dollar. I think I'll have to do some calculations. Like I've absorbed a lot of the price increases and I'm probably going to have to go up, um, raise the price on a lot of them. But again, like, so I charge like right now, $29 for a skein of sock yarn. So, and then plus shipping. So the the prices that Knit Crate ho offers, you know, they're not like indie dyed yarn, but the prices aren't like unreasonable. And the quality of the yarn has been really nice. There have been a few weird ones here and there, but overall I've been really happy with the quality of the yarn. The, yeah, the problem is like, it's a huge jump for like mystery stuff. And like, if it truly means that it's not gonna be tonal after tonal, month after month after month, you know, if they're going to take more color risks and do like more things, so there's more of a surprise there, 
then that would be really, really good. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I'd rather them be honest about the cost than like go under, you know, which I don't know if they're about to go under, but, or anything like that. I'd rather them be honest about the pricing, but I think that they don't always do a good job about communicating these prices to people. Like when the prices decreased, I had no idea until I looked and I was like, oh, that looks less. Um, and so it is a big jump from where it used to be. The turn down the heat on the stove again. Oh, I turned on the heat on the wrong one. That's why. Um, in the past, uh, in the in the past, the equivalent of the Knit and Crochet Club was twenty four ninety nine a month, and so it has increased substantially, but they also had the crate at that price at the 20, basically $25 for a really long time. And so when I was at $25, I was like, this is a steal. <laughs> and it's still not bad, but clearly it could be a price point that could be too high for someone to get a mystery thing that maybe they will or will not like. So yeah, I, you know, and actually like thinking of things like, I don't think Paradise Fibers has changed their prices in many years um, or anything like, yeah. So as like materials and things like in 2017, it was $45. Did that include? You're reviewing the history in 2017, but was that, that was, must've been the Indie Dyer one. Because in 2017, Knit Crate was $25, but they had the Artisan Crate. And so that one was more expensive, but that used like indie dyed yarn. So like small dyers. Um, but yeah, because I just remember, um, yeah, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure the $45 was the Artisan Crate. Yeah, I don't know how much that, that is. Um, I don't think. Oh, I found one of my videos. No, nope, I don't want that. I just want to see what I said in the, I don't want the chat replay either. I want the video description, guys. I want to see my video description. Oh, is it because I have the video like minimized? There we go. I want the description. Okay, so in 2019 of February, the member Knit Crate membership was $25. The Sock Crate was $20. And I don't have the pricing of the Artisan Crate. Subscription changes. I have no idea what the changes were. Yeah, there have been the years of me criticizing their changes. Um, okay, so that was February 2019 when maybe they discontinued the Artisan Crate, maybe. Uh, I'm gonna check my email. Aha. Huh. Okay, yeah, so that's when they got rid of the artisan crate. So I want to see how much that costs. Knit crate. Must have an email. No. I just see review. Yeah, I can't find what the price was.
Um, oh, I'm not even having my face. Sorry, guys. Um, in 2017, it was $45, and then they lowered it. Okay, Melanie, you know what that might have been? If it was, that could have been when Rob took over the company. Um, so that could have been when the company changed hands and then the price was lowered. Because I don't think I started unbox. When was my first Knit Crate unboxing? Content. Oh. Live date. Okay, my first Knit Crate ever was in February 2018. Um, so, oh my gosh, I look like a baby. That was so long ago. Um, and so when I started, it was $25, but uh, that's so funny. It's so, so funny. That's so funny that I didn't know. Um, so let me see. Uh, you've been super disappointed in the last level of crates. You wouldn't mind paying for something amazing, but you feel like most of what they've been doing lately is so generic. Um, and you know, and for some people, it may still be a really good deal, but I don't blame people who are upset. I guess my point here is I don't blame people who thought that it was a really, really good deal at like $25 and then don't think it's as good of a deal anymore. Um, I don't blame people for feeling that way because the prices has gone up. And so then your evaluation, if you don't think the value of what you're getting is also increasing, can be there. I still think it's not an extreme value. It's just a huge price increase. Um, so I don't want to like dip on them too hard because overall I do like the yarn, but And this isn't just because they've like featured me and stuff in the past. Like, you know, I have no problem criticizing them when I feel like it's been earned. Um, but I also like to praise them when I feel like it's been earned. So, yeah, I mean, I, again, I'd rather them be honest than, uh, than not, you know? So it's just, it's just hard. It's just hard. Um, but it's also hard for me to be like, oh, that's so expensive. When like, I have a mystery, like yarn sampler, which granted I have like extras and stuff, but it costs more than that. And so like, but there is a difference and a bit. And so like, cause like I'm making a lot of the things myself, but you know what I mean? Like it's, it's hard when like, it's hard. Um, but I will continue so sometimes when I unbox, I get excited about and I can like promote other times when I unbox. Um, uh, it's funny because someone, there was one time on one of my old unboxings, someone called me out because of like all the changes and like the issues that they've been having. And you know, the person then ended up like actually like apologizing for being harsh. I was like, actually like in recent streams I've been giving these caveats and sharing this, like, I can't go back and like add a things aren't great now to a review that's like three years old. Um, but they have been having a lot of challenges and things got better and my main yarn has shipped. I don't know if I'll be able to unbox it um, because next week there's a video every night, but I'll try. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard when you're like, if you're getting a solid yarn and you're like, oh, maybe I could grab this at Knit Picks or something, then like that can be, that can be challenging. So I have been more excited about some of the patterns they've included lately, but anyway, I could talk about this for a while. Let's, let's think about more fun, more fun stuff again. Um, and let's go ahead and get ready to dye some more yarn. <laughs> Let's send more yarn. Ooh, whatever that green that I poured over is looking really cool. All right, so Beth totally guessed it. We've got a little bit of brown. 
This is the dye bath we used on that first skein. I love that I have just all my gloves right here. When my hands sweat, I can't do as much. Okay. We are about to not leave no dye behind, but that's kind of the vibe. Oh dear, hopefully I don't have this yarn tangled. But I do have some zebra ZK yarn here. That like, I was like, where, oh, there are the ties. I was like, where are the ties in the, in the bucket? So I think it's been a while since I've used zebra yarn in a live stream, but there was a period of time where like every photo, I was like, well, this yarn already has the like black in it. And so it almost became, okay, I don't know, like memes or something. I almost, not quite, but almost need a zebra yarn emoji. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, because I would just use it in so many streams because it is such a fun base. And the placement of, like, it's the two-ply yarn, and one of the plies is variegated, like, black, white, and gray. And so it just, it's really fun. I really, really like it. Okay. I have added 300 grams. The DK is just 100% superwash merino. And we are going to do partially leave no dye behind, although this has acid in it already. Hmm, so we'll have to think about this. Okay, but we're going to be playing with our copper. I'm going to fill this with a lot of water. Not too much water, but a lot. But I'm going to use the what we get with this more copper color to help me decide. Oh, there's a lot of water in here. Things are going to blend. I'm going to use this to help me decide, like, how much or little of other, oh dear, of other colors to do. Oh dear, I'm, I used too much of it already. And how fast is it striking? Not that fast, that's good. I can work it through. Because I'm like, we're cold, but there was acid in here. Kind of flip the yarn over. We're going for it, you know, it's not gonna be perfect, but actually some pastels left aren't bad either okay i'm planning on doing some more browns towards the center and i want to do some of those blues towards this side and have like more brown in the middle but i think that this is too much blue so i'm going to add some here and then we're going to add a bunch of water And we'll see if I feel like I need to dilute it more. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. And then we'll do brown in the middle. And so there's not going to be as much like white or light. We're going to add some there. Add this down. Like it's not going to be like perfectly repeating or anything, but... It's not totally bad. The thing with the first colorway is we did not have acid present yet. And so therefore things did not start striking very quickly at all. And now things can strike a little bit faster. We're gonna go ahead and just use all of that because why not? And then for the brown, we have this tiny bit of pecan brown that's already been mixed. But there really isn't much in this bottle. And so I think we may use most of that. Oh, 
Oh yeah, that wasn't much at all. One of the goals of my stream here today was to Oh, was to try to use up some of these stock solution bottles that I had. And so I'm trying to like flip the yarn a bit in place so that way we can layer more color. You know, the brown and that copper give me very like tiger vibes. And it's okay. Oof, the brown and that teal are so pretty together. But this is sort of where we are now. And I feel like we've got darker and lighter coverage in areas, but I am pretty happy with that. So I'm going to go and start heating this again for about 30 minutes. Wahoo! Uh, I only used up two stock solution bottles though. And I do have more dye and I don't have more yarn yet. So I'm going to need to get a little bit more yarn somewhere. Because I think that we're going to do probably have another leave no dye behind. Um, I'm checking on our kettle dyed friend. Oh, there's a lot of blue left. I moved it for the first time and I'm just like, oh yeah, that's going to be in there for a while. <laughs> okay. So we have this blue color and let me bring over the other color that we have. The Knit, Knit Creek does have good sales for members. That is true. So we do have these two colors left and we've got that sort of like green and of course it's looking browner again and we've got like a little bit of a brownie kind of color. Um, I'm going to have to think about containers or whatnot, but let me grab our yarn that we just seen that. So I will say that our champagne, I probably use a little too much because yeah, that's reading a tiny bit, like kind of like the color you would expect based on the color of the dye stock um, that's here, but it's cute there. It's like got random patchy color, speckly color, and I like it. It looks really good. It's pretty hot. These two look really good together, like really good together. So I'm excited. Oh dear. All right. Let me pop up my face. Um, uh, Oh, let me see. Um, hello from Germany. Sweet. Okay. Uh, let me see what else is going on right now. Um, certainly we've got the, let's see what, I actually also just restocked my shop recently. Uh, so my Etsy shop, I'm going to get the late. Ah! Oh. Where is... Huh. 
Okay, no, no problem. Um, all right, I dropped the link to my shop in the chat. Um, hi, Tabitha, thank you so much. Uh, okay, so my shop, I just restocked it. Um, so we have some fun sets. We've got the peacock yarn that we did last month, um, a bunch of blues that are from a Dye Pop PS video that is currently up for patrons. Uh, some, this one is fun. We've got some yellow. Wait, did it? I'm not shopping. That's so funny. Uh, some yellow on yellow speckle attempt. That video will be up in June, I think. Uh, a little bit of some roving. Uh, the, oh, I finally added the scribble dyed yarn. That's one another one that I added. <laughs> Um, but the other thing is that the uh, 2022 Spring Mini Skein Mini Series sets are still available. Now, the only um, add on full skein that's left is a non superwash fingering weight yarn. Uh, that is the only one that is currently left. And it does come with a little progress keeper. Uh, there are two of the add on soft links that are left. And at this point, um, like, Previously, it's like, oh, to get the add-on, you have to get the set. If you want one of the mystery full skeins, I, you could go ahead and just get it. I don't care if you get the, the rest of it or not. Um, that's not a problem. And then uh, we'll check and see the bases that are free. The bases that are free. The bases that are um, something. Uh-oh. Oh, that's just my husband. Fine. <laughs> I was like, what's that? Um, he was in our word, our wordle chat. Okay, so let's see the bases that are left. Um, I have a little. I think I have one of the Marie, superwash merino yak sock. I have maybe a couple of the superwash MCN sock. Maybe one of the merino silk sock, and then maybe just one of the superwash dk yet i forget the actual numbers not many i think that maybe there's five left total so uh yeah that 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 um yeah but anyway uh what was i saying i get distracted i'm like i haven't taken a break but that's okay Oh man, I was checking on. Oh, cool, cool. Um, I need to reduce the heat on the stove though. As I try to not unplug the laptop. <laughs> oh, that's looking really cool. That's looking really cool. Um, all of this yarn is really, really fun. Oh, right. I still have like a little bit. Oh, you know what we'll do? We'll do a shoe box. Oh, no, I need more yarn. Ah, that's what I forgot. I got distracted. Where did I put the yarn? Oh, here. Oh, it's right here. Oh, it's okay. All right. Oh, do I have any right here? No, I don't have any right there. All right, I'm gonna have to go upstairs for yarn. So are there any requests for a yarn base you would like to see me dye? <laughs> um, because, yeah, uh, I, I need to grab like 200, I wanna grab 200 grams or something. So I'm gonna add a little bowl. What yarn base? Um, bulky, okay. Sock, something totally random. <laughs> and I'll pull something, either something like bulky or chunky, uh, another DK weight yarn, another sock yarn, or I'll pull something totally random. Roving or sparkle? Ooh, Swish takes up water. Swish does take up water super fast. Um, that's probably the DK I would grab if I'm going up there because I know how quickly it soaks up water. And um, so the switch sucks up water fast, and then the yeah, because like I was like, I don't know what random like sparkles and and things that I have. I have a lot, 
Um, I have a lot of different uh, different stuff. Uh, and so what we'll probably do is like wet it in the shoe box, pour these dyes on, let it sit for a little bit, then move it around, which is a technique in a video that will be coming up at the beginning of June. And actually, oh, I minimized it. So like this yarn, I think these are some of the pictures taken with the old camera. Um, this was done with like a lot of different colors, but that is doing the a shoe box technique that I'm about to do now, um, which only two colors, but they probably break. Um, ooh, what about something to over dye? I don't think I have something on deck at the moment for over dyeing. Otherwise, that would be super fun. Over my newest knit crate. Well, I think the color I got last month was dark, right? I don't even remember. It's like, didn't I just on, I don't remember what the color was. And I haven't received the May yet. Otherwise, I would. I do have some more knit crate over dyeing plans. Um, but if I was prepped, then I would do that. But I will start with something that is white-ish. Um, I do have some non-white um, worsted weight wool, non-superwash, but that takes more time to absorb color. No, it was green and white. Oh, it was variegated? Oh, that was a soft one. But, okay, it looks like the DK is, ooh, to something totally random. I opened last week. I know, but I don't remember right now. My brain is not doing well. I think it was the sock crate that had the a variegated green and white. You vote for something totally random. It won't let you pick it? Okay. Oh, there. DK is something totally random or neck and neck. Maybe I, oh, okay. Beth, since you, it wouldn't let you vote, I'll vote for you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. That's actually the biggest thing that you can do to help support the content here. Um, okay, Beth, I voted for you. <laughs> I'll give it a little bit, like a couple more minutes, um, just in case, but that's so funny. <laughs> oh, wait, you know what I can do now? Me laughing emoji. <laughs> usually am cracking up. Silly question. Can you bleach dyed yarn? No, it'll damage the wool. Uh, there is, there exists a safe process to bleach yarn, but uh, yeah. It, um, it's, I don't think it's something that can be done at home. I don't know the like process. Okay, I'm turning down the heat there, turning down the heat here. Um, all right, we will use that shoe box and I'm going to grab some yarn. Okay. So let's see. Oh, actually, nope. First, I'm going to check on my. Uh oh. That's like, what was I? Oh, no, that was. I keep waiting to like see something about my groceries. Um, but, um, Uh. Yeah, glad you asked. I, I tried doing a color remover video once and um, that did not go well. Okay, something totally random. All right. I will be right back. I think I'm going to pop in a brief like commercial break. I haven't done one of those yet, um, but I'll be back as I go and find something totally random upstairs. I'm going to try to find something super wash though. All right, I'll be right back. Something totally random, eh?
All right. So by totally random, I started looking through to see what I had, right? Uh, <laughs> to see what I had uh, easy access to. And at first I grabbed 12, which is like a worsted weight, high twist yarn, Aaron weight. Um, just super 100% super much merino. And I got like mostly to the stairs and I changed my mind. Uh, <laughs> I completely changed my mind. And then um, I grabbed some Superwash Capretta. And so this yarn is 80% Superwash Merino wool, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. And so it's not totally random in that it is a base that I've dyed um, a lot, but it's totally random in that I haven't dyed it in a while and it's not Stroll, Swish, Hawthorne, or Wool of the Andy. I also considered getting a fingering weight zebra, but I figured that didn't count as totally random. <laughs> um, all right, so what I'm going to do is first put some zip ties on this yarn. And then we're going to dunk it in the bucket really quickly um, and let it sit there for a tiny bit because this will take some time. Ooh, the thing I did not consider... I'm setting up a cool that and we have company coming tomorrow. It'll be fine. We'll move it. He's going to be like, why do you have dye on the table outside? And I'll be like, why not? So this is not soaking up water as fast as say like swish wood. It's also not bad. My watch is totally going to think I'm swimming. All right, I'm gonna leave it in there. Oh, I don't have a timer going at all. Let's set a timer for five minutes. Okay, to the DK yarn, which probably won't finish up by today. I'm gonna add a lot of vinegar. There's a lot of blues in there. I'm a little nervous about the blues on this yarn as well, but we'll see. Basically, we're gonna add the yarn, add color, and then uh, like move it around. So we'll see. Um, so you're wondering about hair bleach, since wool is sheep hair. Wool is structured a bit differently from human hair, though, in the way, um, like they are both like protein fibers, but wool, yeah, I mean, if you use too much bleach or bleach too long, like bleach damages human hair for sure and it can cause breakage so um yeah i don't know but of course i've also i'm someone who's been afraid to dye my own hair even though i do have some overtone upstairs like overtone for like dark hair uh so yeah uh oh let's see what happened sure Um, cool, cool, cool. Uh, you love that base. Yay! I'm kind of, I, see, I want to dye my hair purple. I would love to dye my hair purple. But, but I don't want to bleach it. And so this is the hair, my hair color. So it is a lot, like right on the webcams, it always looks brown. My hair is not brown. It is auburn. I am a redhead. <laughs> and I don't, I will fight people on that, even though it looks really brown right here. It's not. Uh, it's very coppery. Uh, and so I'm like, Overtone has like the purple for brown hair, but I'm like, color theory, like it's, my co hair color is so like orangey. It's not, it's not like that it's orange, but if I add purple on top of it or blue on top of it, it's going to just turn a dark brown. Uh, and so I got um, some pink and that I might try at some point. So I'm like, let's lean into the warmth. Oh yeah, listen to Gretchen about hair stuff. Uh, don't use lightning powder on wool. You'll 100% will ruin the yarn. Yeah, I tried, I do have a video. Oh, I can remove this random color of me. Um, the reason why I have this color downloaded is maybe I'm thinking about something with these bubbles. I don't know. Uh, 
uh, June, I always pick a rainbow color for color inspiration, even though we just are having a rainbow series next week. Uh, <laughs> so I'm like, ooh, what kind of rainbow picture to pick? Uh, but yeah. Anyway, uh, I cannot see how much time is on the timer from here. Looks like it's either three something or two something. But yeah. Um, I just had, but I don't want to lift the color in my hair. That's the thing. Because the reason why, like, I wouldn't mind trying, like, overtone or something is because most of it would wash out. But, like, whenever my sister-in-law has, like, bleached her hair and then done artificial colors over it, it looked great. But that requires so much maintenance to keep the bright color that, like, it bleaches out in a while. And then she's left with, like, the blonde streaks. And so, like... I wouldn't mind having purple streaks, but I don't want blonde streaks. So yeah, if I do dye my hair, I will probably do a vlog about it because it's a dyeing channel. And so, yeah, we'll see. But bubbles would be an awesome pick for the dye one. Yeah, so I need to um, either like try, use some old pictures. One of my favorite pictures as a kid is them wearing rainbow shirts with bubbles. But I don't really want to make the kids be the inspiration photo and so. Yeah. Um, your hair is very dark brown, almost black. So you have to lift some before dyeing it purple. I bet it looks great. Um, so like, yeah, I think that if I, if I start to go gray and so then my hair gets lighter from that, then I would totally go ahead and play around with it. What's funny is that like Lucas is old enough and Ryder too, if they wanted to dye their hair, like especially in the summer, like green or blue, their hair is both pretty pale. Ryder actually has platinum blonde streaks in his hair. He's, there's like a hint of strawberry to it. And then it's got some like darker blonde and like stuff in there. But like, I think that it would over dye like without lightening it. And Lucas's hair is either super dark blonde or light brown. So yeah. Ugh. Okay, I don't remember how long the other stuff's been on the stove, but we're going to go for this. All right, so we are going to take the dye out. Now those aren't straight 1% stock solutions because they've been diluted, but I'm going to add like two liters of water. Two liters of water, and I think I'm still on the wrong thing. Hmm. Um, it's usually true about the purple fading after a while. You dye just the underlayer of your hair, so it's not as obvious when it fades. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I just worry about maintenance, and I like had a series of a lot of bad haircuts in a row, and now like I don't stress about my hair as much, which is great. And so I'd hate to do something that stresses it, or that stresses me. All right, I'm bringing this down and sort of scrunching it. And so there isn't a ton of liquid and space in here. So, oh, nope, we're gonna go for it and do it like this. And no, we're gonna add a little more water. <laughs> Indecisive Rebecca. Indecisive Rebecca. So, cause I want, the issue is that we've got like, clearly got liquid in here, but let's start with this color that was initially supposed to be a brown, but it's got some muck in it. So it's got a little bit of a lot of stuff. So we're gonna mostly focus it on those two areas. And then this blue, 
or green aqua kind of color. I'm mostly going to focus on those areas. And so potentially, okay, there's, I'm going to reset the timer to be 10 minutes. There's no acid. Shoot, Rebecca. There's supposed to be acid. I already messed it up. That's okay. We may just end up with something tonal. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot I had acid. Oh my gosh. But the colors are still going to move through and they will start striking a little bit. Uh, but the last time I did this, I only had 100 grams of yarn in here. And so, therefore, like, it, um, the dye was able to move more and also access more of the yarn. But you can see, I don't want to move the shoe box, but you can see that the color is going down here. It's going to start kind of moving down a little bit there. Uh, we'll wait 10 minutes and then move the yarn around. The color will probably end up being very similar. Um, to our yarn mop on the stove, which is a really pretty green. Um, I'm gonna turn off the heat on that one. There's blue in the pan, but we'll deal with it. Okay, I see the, the brown is looking brown here now. It wasn't looking brown before. We'll rinse out these cups and put the last little residual bit in potentially when we lift the yarn to move it to allow the colors to sort of spread all over. But we may end up with some speckles. Ooh, there's some like, little tendrils of dye like moving through uh, but not as much is coming down on the side some of it is starting to move down from like gravity but yeah we'll see what happens it's fun i plan the video i have right now with this kind of technique uh was a leave no dye behind that'll be out in early june Rebecca with a question mark? Ooh, I should write that up. Um, yeah, it's just like indecision. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, because like face palm is high up on my list. Uh, <laughs> oh, but yeah, because I'm like, yeah, I love that idea. <laughs> because, yeah, it was like, I need to come up with things that you can tell what they are when they look super teeny. Um, that, ooh, the colors are moving down some. You can see, I don't think you can see my mouse. But so right by, oh, like right there, where the top of the clock is. <laughs> uh, right over there, there's a little bit more color coming down. And so, yeah, it's sort of, it's almost like, dyeing in a mason jar but the problem with doing the mason jar which i do enjoy doing that but things usually end up being so compressed that if there's liquid in there already and you add liquid dye on top it's not going to be able to move through as well you need there to be for the colors to spread out of it you need there to be not compression and therefore a lot of resist from the yarn so Anyway, I think I need to figure out, I don't want to like accidentally rename any of these, um, but yeah, if you, if you type in like colon and then chemnitz, all of the like chemnitz specific emotes will just come up without having to go on the like, on the chat bar. Yeah, this, this colon. Right, because the semicolon is the one with the, the comma. <laughs> oh my goodness oh my goodness no but i not all the like other emotes also have to be me like i'm happy to do like another indie and if um anyone's curious these are the ones that we have um and so yeah but i would have tried to have myself like holding yarn or something but i think it would be a little hard to see so i thought that it was a little bit easier to see like me holding a heart so that's why there's that and just like 
excited me. <laughs> oh, I can't tell if more is going down. This is one where I'm like, ooh, I want like a time lapse camera at the side, which sometimes I do. Oh no, I didn't put my face on. Sometimes I do a time lapse. Wait, was the thing not there? Oh no, it's there. It's just small. Sometimes I do a time lapse and then I'm like, nothing really changed. <laughs> um, nothing, nothing really changed. But um, oh. Ah, uh, yeah. I got, if anyone cares, I got today's Wordle in three. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I also do, I do Quirtle almost every day, which is like four. And then sometimes I also do 60 Fordle. Which that one like takes more, like a little more thought, but it's like not bad. I've never lost it. I you have 70 guesses to guess 64 words, but yeah, I don't know if any of you guys play. <laughs> I'm not going to start sharing like my like results every day or anything like that, anything remotely to that, but yeah, um, I'm starting to, uh, to fade a bit, but I can't tell how much time it's probably about five minutes. Do you love the yarn mop emoji? Thank you. <laughs> um, I got, like, so I made, ooh, let me see, I should have my, let me see if I can find my mood board. Um, nope, that's a draft. Um, what did I do? Oh, my order. Okay, that's just a picture of me. Okay, I'll show some of my mood boards I gave to the artist. It's fun. Okay, so I was like, all right, I want a mop in a rainbow puddle. Because I was like, yarn mop. And I was like, I think that if she tried to make like the mop like yarn, it would have been too... Um, Hard. And so then these are, oh, where did I, where did I put that? Well, that's not where I wanted it. Oh, I'll go here. No, nope. here. Um, okay, there's that. And here's the, the, the mood board that uh, showed it. And so, yeah, I love the way that the yarn mop came out from like the inspiration that I shared. And then the in me, I was like, I wanted the dog barking, but to not look scary <laughs> was my like, was my thing. And so, yeah, I was just like mega, mega impressed. Um, mega impressed. And then, yeah, the like, it, you never know when you like describe I, I try when I like commission any like doodles or artwork to provide like a reference of like what I'm describing because sometimes otherwise things get lost in like, I mean, lost in translation isn't fair when like, the, you know, the people I'm working with are speaking English like perfectly, um, but lost in translation just because like if you have an idea in your brain and try to convert it to words and then someone else is trying to draw based on those words, Having some kind of mood board with reference images, I think, is really helpful. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah. The I think the dye's wearing out a bit. I'm gonna go peek. As I get up and down and up and down. Uh, not much. A bit. How much time's on the timer? Like Okay, I can wait another minute and a half. I can do it. I can be patient. I can be patient. Uh, I should, I need like a don't touch. <laughs> don't touch the yarn. Um,
So yeah, I'd have to just think like what, what, what would work. But anyway. Uh, oh man, but yeah. Um, you think it'd be fun to have another indie where he's in your lap or something because he does that so much? Yeah. No, I, I definitely have an idea for an indie thing that isn't just him barking. But I was like, when I was going for the first round, I was like, especially because then I stream, like him barking and having to wait that like that just happens. And so I'm like, ah, it's the indie barking moment, which, hey, indie, where are you? It's like, mommy, I was guarding the door. Yeah, were you guarding? Were you sleeping by the door? Hi. I know, now you're gonna be annoying, but. I love you. Yes, you want pets? I know, they can't really see you though. Here, you wanna, come here. Can you sit? There you go, can you pretty? Pretty. Oh, there's my timer, okay. You can go back to sleep. He sleeps all day. Uh, oh, timer. I swear, like, I can tune out the, the timer sounds so well. Okay. Yeah, and then I'll just move it into the garage or something. But now is the moment of truth where we pick up the yarn Oh, that's pretty. So there is not as much color like on the other side, but there will be more color on the other side. Like some of it, even on this base, just sticks, you know? So there'll be a tiny bit more because I've got like these little bits. Not that this is a lot. But it'll be something. Or mostly nothing. And then I'm going to pop a lid on and stick it outside. If it were winter or it would get below freezing, then I would leave it just in here. Um, actually, no, I would leave it on top of like something in the kitchen, but it's safer to put it outside. I just realized you probably couldn't hear me. It's safer to put it outside just because kids and pets. Yeah. So I'm going to go put this outside. It's not that cold out. So that's good. But yeah, now all I have to do is uh, clean up. <laughs> clean up and then edit more. Um, <laughs> uh, Beth, I think I got the idea to include an indie one. Um, when like, I realize like, oh, people get excited when he shows up in streams and stuff. And so I'm like, there has to be an indie one. Um, and so when I was of the six I had, when I was picking the first four, I was like, okay, one has to be indie. <laughs> oh man. Get a timer beeping emoji. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know it's like how much detail can be can can you see in the like little itty bitty thing? It's so funny. Because yeah, I I also like 
I really like the artist. That so for the um I think I said the, the loyalty badges, which I think they change. Oh, you can't see my mouse. Um, and the timelines are defined by YouTube, I think. Um, yes, so it's a uh, new member, and then one month, two month, six month, 12 month, and 24 month. So uh, yeah, those were the, but I'm, may potentially redo these, but I like the idea of like little dye droplets, or at least like water, and then you add like different colors. So, uh, but yeah, I did those myself and I was like, whoa, that's hard work. <laughs> and that's just me like playing with, I think they like a 32 by 32 pixel canvas. So I would like magnify it really big. I'm not very good at drawing. Maybe the chem kids. Oh, <laughs> well, they don't use, I did consider, I'll, I'll write down all these ideas. Um, it might be hard to, to see, but um, I did consider like a mom <laughs> one. You know, maybe if like I eventually could do like a lot more or something, because yeah, they're like sometimes like, it happens more in the evenings. I've been streaming more when they're not home, but the like mom, has to go help. I'm streaming. That happens too much. <laughs> you guys are so awesome. Thank you so much for supporting all of this. I really, really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, for the for the short term, the uh, revenue from memberships will go to like uh, graphic design <laughs> budget. <laughs> That, that's my plan of the funds. I mean, which is silly because I did just spend over a thousand dollars on a new camera, but that needed to happen. <laughs> oh, let's see. Hi. Um, you have a sort of, um, you have a sort of dumb question. There are no dumb questions. Is it going outside in the sun? Um, so it's a cloudy day. If it were a sunny day, then I would put it outside in the sun and having an opaque lid doesn't make much of a difference there. If anything, it can be good if any, some molecules are less light fast and so they could bleach or like lose some of the pigmentation in sun. Um, but if you have like a closed container that's in the sun, the contents inside will heat up. Think about how hot your car, the inside of your car gets on a really hot sunny day. The same kind of thing can happen with any kind of closed container, especially when there's liquid that will start to evaporate and then be tr sort of trapped in there. And so now that it gets close to boiling or anything, and certainly even with my house cold at room temperature, colors can start to absorb to yarn. And I will steam set this in the end, um, but mainly it's just going outside so that way it's out of the way. <laughs> oh, thank you. Like I, I have so much fun like doing all this and um, yeah, I'm really just, having a blast. I may take a couple weeks off in June slash July, but there will still be content coming out. I'm just working to that way. Like, um, I would just maybe not be reading comments and stuff as much, uh, if I'm offline. Yeah. So it, well, it, cause it never gets like that hot, but certainly on like an 80, 90 degree day, like there are times when I used to not steam set it after. And now I just do for good measure because some pigments like room temperature will start to strike to the yarn, like leaving the yarn with vinegar at, you know, my house is probably like 70 degrees right now. Um, so, you know, a standard room temperature, the, and certainly nowhere close to steaming. Right. Um, but the some of those colors where I poured them are kind of staying there and some is spreading out but some is staying where it's staying put and so um yeah it's just but waiting like it's a cold process technique um and uh yeah I'll probably be doing a lot more of that when, when I can do stuff outside it can be handy when also you have limited containers to die in to do this everyone deserves a vacay we have some of our best friends in the whole world are going to come stay with us for a couple weeks and I'm so excited. 
uh, so excited. And so I have no idea, because like my kids will still be in school. And I'm like, Auntie Rebecca wants to hang out with the, I was like, if you guys have to work, I'll hang out with the kids. And it's like, they can like, you know, entertain themselves. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> I haven't seen them in two years. So yeah, that that's coming up. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm really, really thankful to have the opportunity to do something that, it's, that I'm so passionate about. But anyway, I think I'm going to sign off so that way I can clean up and make some lunch. And by make some lunch, I need to reheat some lunch. Um, <laughs> reheat some lunch. But where's my inspiration photo? There you go. I can make it bigger. But anyway, thank you all so much for tuning in for the May 2022 Chemist Dialogue live stream. And I just realized there's a space missing in the image. Oh well. <laughs> uh, but if you would like to dye a yarn inspired by this image, uh, please do. Uh, I mean, today, I always welcome you to try to replicate my results. Today, with all the random mixing, it would be hard to mix the exact same colors that I used. But in general, I don't mind if you try to copy, like I invite you to play around with the colorways and palettes and things that I do. And I mean, yeah, don't feel bad. I often have like the recipes in the description. So never feel bad about using that. I'm sharing that so that way you can play with it. But you can do your own spin um, on this. And so if you'd like to be featured in the recap video that will show all the finished yarn from this stream, uh, just share the pictures of the yarn that you dye or fiber on Instagram using the hashtag Chemnitz Dialong, uh, or look for this photo. I'm on the other side right now. This photo on the Chemnitz Facebook page. I should have a link to that photo in the description of this stream, uh, so that way you can find the post and you can leave a picture comment there. But yeah, and yeah. So then I will. I don't know the next time I will be live with face to face, but you will see me live on, um, or live in a chat room, uh, Monday night at 8 30 PM, uh, Eastern time to react to each night of the spring mini scheme mini series videos. And so when these videos first come out, they are a premiere. So it's more like a live TV event. Like the video will start at 8.30, and a lot of them that I've done so far are around like 40 minutes-ish. Um, and so then it'll be, if you tune in a little bit late, you'll be in the middle of the video. But then after the video is done with that first run, it'll then be like a regular YouTube video that you can watch on demand. But during that first run, there'll be a chat room where we can hang out and I'll react <laughs> to the video, give some like other thoughts. Uh, this is a time when I'm like, I might regret not having a Rebecca face palm emoji and things like that. <laughs> um, and I'm out of focus, but yeah, I otherwise don't know the next time I'll be live in front of the camera, probably, um, in early June though. Uh, but yeah, uh, please subscribe and make sure your notifications are on so you never miss any streams. And I'm just so excited for the content coming up. Uh, and tomorrow's video will be a lot of fun too. Oh, thank you all so much. And yeah, um, to everyone who has joined uh, the membership to get um, the membership badges, you'll see their names are green now. If you would like to learn um, more about that, uh, I just dropped the link in the chat, but you can also see a join button uh, next to my channel name that you can go and check out. And there'll be a little video where I'll talk more about like where I talk about it. and. I do also have a public blog post on Patreon. Um, that I'm also linking in the chat that where I go and I talk about like, like the, any similarities and differences there. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, so thank you so much for uh, helping me and in playing with this new feature, seeing my custom emotes in the chat. Is, oh, it's making my heart grow three sizes and which, I mean, my heart like kind of shrunk. So, I mean, maybe that sounds bad medically, but oh, it makes me so feel loved. And so I, I really appreciate all of the support, but anyway, 
Uh, yeah, I'll go clean up and eat some lunch, and I hope that you all have a wonderful week, and I'll chat with you all soon.